Hey guys, still uh, tinkering with the control panel here. Uh, got my new one and one eighth inch uh, bit by Irwin. This is a paddle bit. It does uh, make holes pretty quickly. You might want to be a little careful if you're using a paddle bit to do your button holes. Sometimes it's a good idea to go like uh, halfway through or maybe a little more to where the center of the paddle bit is sticking through the wood and then come back and finish the hole from the other side of the wood that just might keep it from splintering or you know uh, having pieces that have popped off on the back side of your control panel if you drill down from the top and uh, you know you can you can start from the back or you can start from the front however you got your you know uh, your button holes laid out if you've got them marked or if you've got a sheet like I do I think what I want to do is just tape these and just start drilling where the hole is and just drill through the paper. I've seen people do that and uh, it seems like a, a decent way to do it as long as the paper doesn't rip on you because if it rips and rips into the next buttons well then you're going to have to pull it off, put another piece of paper on there or try to patch it up or something but um, if you kind of go slow when you're starting it uh, you pretty much should just damage the hole that you're going into and that will just help keep you lined up for each point or you could get you um, get you something and just pierce right where the center of the hole is. Uh, you could use a, a drill bit or you could use some type of punch or uh, you could use a nail set and I've got a nail set. There's my one and one eighth inch or one and eight one and an eighth inch paddle bit. That's a brand new one I bought just for this project. I'm using my uh, cordless drill right now but I may break out. I got a big firestorm corded drill. It's got a big uh, half inch chuck on it and everything it's just it's massive it's so strong it'll tear your wrist apart if you don't hang on if you've got a, a big drill bit and you're trying to drill through some hard wood or anything so I have to be careful with that thing if I break it out but right now I want to try this see how it does uh, battery could give out after drilling oh we've got 18 holes to drill we've got 16 button holes that's eight on each one and then we got the two joystick holes so Anyway, I'm going to get on with this and uh, show you some of the progress as I go about it. And by the way, those are my HAP competition joysticks that I'm going to use on this. These are used sticks that I got in with some extra parts from a guy, but they were really in just about new condition. They've got a few little nicks, maybe a few little places, but they're, they're almost new. They could probably stand having the micro switches changed to new ones, but you know, they had those uh, older style actuators, if I'm not mistaken. Those are the uh, white ones. Now the newer HAP competition sticks, they have those uh, black actuators, unless these have been changed out. I'm not sure because I did have to did have to put a spacer or two on these when I was putting them back together out of the parts that I had, but these actuators were, what with, were with these when I got them. And uh, like I say, they're in pretty good shape. They're, they're almost like brand new and I just couldn't see, you know, not using them. You know, it's maybe eight or nine dollars for a stick if you order them on eBay so I would have spent close to 20 bucks for a set and I said hey you know I want to see if I can get some use out of these but anyway we're going to go ahead and uh, start getting ready to drill our holes we got our sheets pretty much in the final position didn't do much moving around since the last clip you seen the only thing I did do is I did extra mark here to show where the hinge is going to be up under this panel because I had to leave uh, that's about a quarter inch there just for the uh, part of the hinge where uh, it opens up and down and uh, didn't didn't want to get too close to that especially with my trackball so I wanted to leave just a little bit of clearance there so it wouldn't be too close to the hinge but uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get started on the holes we'll come back and show you some things as we get them done alright guys I, I kind of figured out a way that I can do this to keep my uh, my holes for my buttons perfectly centered and that way the bit won't drift up down left or right we won't end up with buttons being spaced a little closer or a little farther apart than what our diagram shows here and um, what I figured I would do okay first what I'm going to do I have a piece of uh, plexiglass here this is just a scrap piece from back when I think I made the Mortal Kombat 2 panel a long time ago and I already have a hole drilled in there it's probably where I was testing out my hole saw and it's the exact size of a hat push button uh, one and one eighth inch might be just slightly larger but uh, if you can see here's one of the test holes we were drilling in a scrap piece of plywood and if you hold this over there it's it's pretty much perfect over it goes right over it and uh, they may be just just slightly more clearance on the plexiglass but uh, anyway we're going to take this and we're going to place it over the diagram where each buttonhole is and we'll probably go ahead and take this in place but if you notice 
see the diagram it has a little more clearance on the holes that they show than what we're going to need we don't really need it to be that wide but this is probably kind of a generic one set up uh, you know the spacing's correct but uh, certain buttons are going to have slightly more width or diameter than other buttons depending on the manufacturer you go with well since we're going with HAP this is the true size we need we want really to mark these, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the plexiglass, this piece here, and we're just going to move this to each circle and take a pencil and run it around the inside of the plexiglass hole and just make us a, a, just a new outline there so we know the exact dimensions that the HAP button is going to be when it's inserted after the holes are drilled. And once these are all marked, what that's going to do is give us a uh, pencil line around the inside of each one of these and then we can take this hole that we've actually drilled in this three quarter inch piece of plywood and we can set it over top of each button hole and uh, once we set it over top of there we line it up perfectly and make sure that that center point on the diagram is dead center by following our pencil marks that we made from using the plexiglass and uh, we're going to clamp this in place for each button hole we're going to leave this and that is going to allow us to take our pile bit and drop it down in there and drill out our hole without the paddle bit wandering up, down, left, or right. Since this has already been drilled, it lined us up perfectly and it's not going to allow, even if you start that hole and it's trying to run off center, it's not going to allow this bit to go anywhere. It's going to keep it dead center on our marks because the walls of the three quarter inch plywood is so high it's not going to let this paddle bit wander so we'll be able to keep every one of these buttonholes perfectly aligned just like we need so that's how I'm going to do it and that idea I was driving home yesterday from work and somehow it just popped in my head I don't know what I was thinking about I was thinking about the control panel because I wanted to work on it and uh, you know this video has actually been made over the course of a couple of days because I just haven't had that much time to fool with this but uh, it's just an idea I had. I said, hey, you know, how in the world could I guide this bit, you know, if I don't have a drill press? And all of a sudden I'm like, you know, well, you know, if it starts its own hole, it can wander up or down, you know, left or right, just because of the nature of a panel bit. So just give it something to uh, hold the walls of the bit or the edges of the bit in place where it can't move, and it's going to force it to stay on center. So as long as we clamp this tight enough, and that little scrap piece of wood doesn't move around and we could get a larger piece of plywood if we want to just so we have a larger piece to clamp in place and put more clamps on it but um, probably won't be necessary but we may do that because we are going to change from this little cordless drill to my big firestorm drill um, firestorm drill and uh, I'll show you that drill here in a second it's just it's just a monster it's it's uh, really made for rugged work and it can drive you know monster bolts and screws and you know, it, it, it doesn't, uh, <laughs> it, it's not used for things that, uh, you know, you want to be real careful with about not hurting something, you know, because, I mean, it's so powerful. It has so much torque. It even has an extra handle that you can attach to, you know, give yourself a little better, uh, little better grip on there because, I mean, it will absolutely twist your wrist clean off if the bit catches on anything. If you're going into a large piece of, like, treated lumber outside and, you're putting in uh, some kind of giant screws holding some decking together or anything like that if it catches and it can't it can't quite uh, turn the screw in or the bolt in it's going to twist your wrist off <laughs> it's that powerful it's really strong so anyway we're going to use that because it's just going to it's going to power through the meat of this wood without any trouble and uh, I'm going to try my best to be careful with it uh, I'm trying to remember if it has a variable speed trigger on it. I think it may, but it's so darn powerful. I think it's kind of hard to squeeze that uh, trigger just down to a certain detent and get that variable speed on it. Maybe a, a couple of ranges, but nowhere near as sensitive as this little cordless drill here. But uh, that's what we're going to use. So we're going to come back, and uh, next thing you'll see, I'll probably have all these circles marked up. I'll have these diagrams taped down to the uh, control panel top here. And... Uh, Another thing that will help is since we're using these boards and clamping them in place, it'll kind of help um, when it goes to tear this paper, if this is clamped over top of it, it'll keep the paper from just tearing crazy and going into the next buttons and stuff. If you didn't have this in place and you just tried to drill straight through the paper, there's a good chance with a paddle bit that it'll tear the paper and damage the next buttons around it. So uh, we really don't even have to use the diagram if we wanted to just take a punch or something and just mark the center holes of each buttons. 
we could do it without the paper in place, but I just kind of like the idea of keeping it in place, making sure we're not getting off mark or anything. And that is the exact place that we're going to uh, drill all the buttons. We've got everything marked up. We've got it exactly the way I think I'm going to like it. Um, from the joystick base over here, we're only going to have uh, maybe 3 8 inch clearance from the edge of the base and where the wood starts from the control panel box here on top. This part right here is going to be right where you see uh, these two lines here. That's where the meat of that control panel box will be. We'll have about 3 eighths of an inch and then the base of the joystick will start so we are getting really close to the edge. But if I use any type of uh, clamping mechanism to hold the top down on the control panel, I can always come up above the joystick and put that right in this area. So I'll still have plenty of clearance as long as I don't mount any buttons right here. I'll just have to make sure I come over a couple of inches if I start mounting like uh, select or start buttons or coin in buttons or anything like that. And uh, over here, clearance is just slightly closer, at least from the edge of this circle. From the edge of the circle, it's only about two eighths from the edge of where the control panel box will be. But since these circles are made a little big, once you center the HAP style circle there to drill through for the HAP buttons, you actually get like an extra eight, uh, eighth of an inch almost. So it's almost three eighths inch clearance there. So it is still pretty close, but we're just taking advantage of the size of this control panel, maxing it out as much as possible. I don't think once we get it installed, it's going to be any problem. It'll still clear. It'll just be real close. And uh, over here, we've got almost an inch after the base. The base of the joystick is going to come over somewhere around here. Um, one, one and a half inch from the center point of the joystick. We're still going to have about an inch clearance between, between the side of the trackball, the, the mounting, the casing for the trackball. And it'll be about the same on this side. If you can see, we've got somewhere around an inch clearance there might have just slightly more clearance on this side but I don't think very much and uh, the trackball we, we got it pretty much lined up on our lines where we want it and we have dropped it a little bit from the center point we don't want it dead center with the buttons and everything I just think uh, with games like Golden Tee or anything where you're really having to push the uh, trackball really hard and get it spinning I just want a little more clearance from here to the top where you know you end up having the bezel and the monitor and everything even though it goes up at an angle I just want to make sure nobody's like going to jam their fingers against the front of the plexi or whatever that's there and uh, hurt their hand or not be able to play the game efficiently so this will still be a good position for games like Centipede and uh, Missile Command and stuff like that, Crystal Castles all that will still work pretty good in this position and I think uh, just the look of it not being dead center I think it looks a little less cookie cutter instead of just centering everything perfectly just drop it down just a little I think it'll still look really great. And um, like I say in the future, it could leave a possibility of putting a four-way joystick up here. The only problem with putting a four-way joystick up here is, of course, it's going to stick up. And so that takes away the advantage of being able to really shove the trackball hard. So that's just a possibility. More likely than not, we're just going to have extra buttons here for control of the, uh, the main machine and everything. You know, uh, the... Uh, the main cabinet will just have more control buttons here and stuff like that. Might have the coin ends and stuff, player select one and two and stuff like that. But uh, we'll figure that out as we go. So, all right, let's get these taped up, get them marked, and uh, get ready to drill these out. All right, guys, we've got our templates taped in place. Used a little masking tape there. It's not very sticky, it'll come off the wood pretty easily, but it will hold the templates in place. And, uh, Got our trackball out of the way temporarily. And to be honest, probably going to think about going out on the porch to do this. It's it's pretty nice. It's between 60 and 70 degrees out there right now. But uh, just uh, be a lot easier than having to uh, clean up the mess in here in the office, even though I could drill it in here. And uh, I could probably uh, either clamp this to my table saw or something. Uh, but uh, most likely I need to clamp it probably to the uh, floorboards or... Uh, um, the walking path of the catwalk or the steps outside or something like that. Something where um, I can put some scrap wood underneath it that way I don't run my paddle bit through and uh, damage the boards or the decking or anything. But uh, in lieu of the uh, battery operated cordless drill here we're going to use the Monster Black & Decker Firestorm here. And uh, this uh, this drill is just a whole lot heavier duty than this little sucker right there. <laughs> you can see kind of the difference in the size of the motor on it and everything anyways. That's a much bigger monster and uh, much more powerful. It's got a half inch chuck on it and uh, 
it's just really strong. I, I've still got a uh, Phillips bit on the end where the last time I used it I was running some uh, either 8 or 10 inch screws in where I did a repair on a piece of log on my home and uh, tell you what it's it's really a monster it's a beast it's powerful 7 amps it's got the extra handle there you can hook up and uh, give yourself a little extra bracing so you don't hurt yourself because if you don't have that extra handle on there this this can absolutely it can really hurt your wrist and uh, I would imagine if this thing caught just right and you had it at high speed, it could probably break a person's wrist. But uh, anyway, it's really going to power through these holes and uh, it's not going to wear down. We're not going to have to recharge a battery like we would on this one anyway. And uh, if you've got a, a much better cordless drill, you might be able to do something like this with it. But uh, my cordless drill, it's uh, 15 or 17 years old and uh, it's an off-name brand, Chicago Tools. It comes from Harbor Freight. So, you know, it's... Uh, it does all the things I need around the house and all, but for something like this, I'm going to go ahead and use the big powerful monster here. But uh, see you in a few minutes, and uh, maybe I'll show you a little bit of drilling the holes out on the porch. Just showing you guys what I'm doing here. Just using our 1 and 1 8 inch hole in the plexiglass here to perfectly center where we're going to drill out for the one and one eighth inch holes for the hat buttons because the diagram is just a little larger than that. It's probably uh, one and three eighths or so, maybe a little larger. And it's just to accommodate different brands of buttons. But uh, I would do it with a scrap piece of wood like this, but you can't see through the wood. So you're not positive if you're completely centered unless you use some type of measuring somehow. It's much easier to just take this piece of plexiglass, put it over your button and you can just eyeball it. You can tell that it's just about even there as it is there on that side. And uh, you have to be looking almost dead down on it to get, get it centered perfectly, but you can see right through the plexiglass. And then once I have it where I want it, I'm just outlining with a black pen here. And you would know for the video, my black pen's trying to stop writing on me. <laughs> Just outline it good and dark. And then pull it away. And you can see there, we've got a good outline and that's exactly one and one eighth inch. I've already done these six over here. Only got one more for this side, then we have to do the other side. So just do this last one on this side, center it up, eyeball it. Looks like there's an equal one eighth inch or so, maybe slightly more all around the outside diameter. And then I'll just outline it here with the pen. And I was going to use a pencil, but the pencil didn't make a fat enough, dark enough line to set the piece of scrap wood over it and see it easily. I kept having to kind of move the wood around to see if I was really right over it. Because see, this, this outline is almost dead one and one eighth inch, which is exactly the same size as the hole in the wood. But the black pen is making a little thicker line and it's showing up a little better. And then I just set the block of wood over it. Don't know if you can see in the video. I'll line this up. And I can see just enough of the ink line that I know that I've got this dead center. And I'll show you, I'll take the camera off the tripod. Not 100% sure if you can see down in there. Let's see if I get close enough where you can kind of see. But you can see a little, just a little bit of ink peeking out around the edge of that hole. And that's just enough for me to perfectly center this. And see, like if I was to move it a little too far off, you see, I see my, see my line I made. And then I would just want to come up, come up close enough to where the line disappears. And I get it perfectly centered. Let's see, it's hard to do without looking straight down in there. You have to look straight down in there pretty much. And eyeball it. But you know... That's going to be much closer than just uh, doing it by trying to just throw the paddle bit up there and hoping you stay centered by eye. This right here, once this is clamped in place or another scrap wood with this one and one eighth inch hole in there, it's going to hold that spade, spade bit dead center on that center point and it's not going to be able to really travel much. It, it won't move no more than probably a sixty-fourth of an inch if it does try to move at all and it's going to have to drill through the meat of this wood on the edges a little bit to even try to move. So I think it's going to stay dead center. But uh, we're going to mark the other side. We've got all eight of these marked. We're going to mark the other side and get ready to drill these. And uh, might even go ahead and uh, 
I gotta look back for the diameter on my uh, joysticks. I can't remember. I think it may be uh, slightly larger than one and one eighth. I think one and one eighth will work. Might be one inch or it might be one and a quarter. I'm thinking one and a quarter. I'm gonna have to look up some of the some of the stats on this stuff online. What people get the best results out of because I haven't drilled one of these by hand before. I've done uh, plexiglass, but uh, like I did the plexiglass cover here on the uh, Mortal Kombat 2, and I think I used a one and one eighth inch hole saw bit just like I did on my buttons and uh, that's the same thing that was used when I was doing this test on this piece of plexiglass was a one and one eighth inch hole saw and to be honest it's slightly larger than one and one eighth inch when you insert the hat buttons they have a little bit of movement around but uh, that actually helps you in case you want to wiggle them just a little and just kind of reposition them because like on the uh, Mortal Kombat's here see each one is kind of encircled in lightning and when I inserted them, sometimes they would be just slightly over, like they were covering up a little bit of the, the blue for the lightning. And since that hole was just slightly bigger, I could just wiggle a little. But it's not going to wiggle any more than your control panel underneath. Your plywood underneath is only going to allow so much wiggle, so it depends on how big those holes are too. But uh, since I did this whole plexiglass uh, thing by hand, I just... Uh, laid the old Mortal Kombat 2 plexi over top of this new piece of plexi which you know the original was Lexan this is actual plexiglass or acrylic whatever people want to call it uh, you have to be a lot more careful drilling this it will crank and bust if you're not careful and take your time and uh, I just lined up the old Lexan over top of this plexi once I had this cut to size and I used a black permanent marker and went around the inside of the old Lexan and made all my buttonhole markings to mark where they're going to go and then I had to center it up by hand and it was pretty difficult to be honest to do all that by hand um, and then come back and do my joysticks and uh, everything really worked out really good the only thing I remember is that I think this one hole you may be able to see that one hole was just slightly lower than it needed to be you can see some of the metal and um, artwork underneath there from the control panel overlay and on top here it's it's like dead flush should be even space and all the way around if it was dead perfect. You can see I was off by just a hair. And it doesn't affect anything really, but you know, if you are not careful and you leave these kind of uh, sharp or abrasive or you get off too much, let's say this hole comes down even farther, then when you're sitting here moving around and stuff, playing the game, your knuckle will catch on that. And you can cut yourself if this is like a sharp edge. So sometimes it's a good idea to take a little file and just file these edges a little bit down, at least around where the joystick is. The buttons won't matter because they're covered. They're covered up with the top of the, the button shroud or edge there. But these joysticks there, if that's got a little bit of a sharp edge where you've drilled through that, depending on how you went through it and what kind of drill bit you used, you can actually skin your knuckle a little bit moving that around. So use a little file when you get done with something like that and just kind of smooth the edge down. Just put the file on the inside and push inwards like that and just kind of smooth it all around. And don't do enough to, you know, monkey up your hole and make it to where it doesn't look round anymore. Just a little bit. Just take off any sharp edges. But uh, anyway, just about completely ready. Going to finish marking these and main mark our joystick holes. And we'll take this whole thing outside and you can see us drilling some. Okay, guys. Kind of have a setup here temporarily. I'm going to move this stuff around when I find a kind of a better way to set it up. Because I got to have room here on this side and this side to put my clamps. And right now the way I got these boards, it's... You know, I just threw it down for a second. But the first thing I need to do is that larger scrap piece right there I'm going to use as my guide. Uh, that piece is just a little too small to clamp. I want to take and drill one or two holes near the center, kind of offset from the center, to use as my guides. And I apologize for what you hear. It sounds like a neighbor's putting a fence or something up. But uh, I'm going to drill maybe two holes in the center of this piece to use as guides for my drill bit. And I want to put one a little closer to this end and one a little closer to this end so that uh, I don't have to move this real high or real low because then my clamps won't reach to clamp it onto the uh, control panel top. But the first thing we need to do is drill a couple of holes that we're going to use for our guides.
and you see how kick-ass that drill is. If you take a look, there's not too much splintering on the top. This is where we first went in, and that's perfectly fine for me. We're going to have an overlay on this, and we can just run a little bit of a file in there and just clean that edge up if, if we want to, but I don't think I'm going to have to. The buttons will fit in there, and the surround for the buttons will cover all that up. Now on the bottom, even though your button nut will cover that up, that's that's a little, little uh, worse than what I would want to see on my control panel. There's a little bit of tearing out there. You see the splintering around there? and um, splintering like that when you're working with your control panel you could get those in your fingers too but uh, what I did is I ran it all the way through and I did have that 2x4 down there as you can see I think it's on your screen right about there that's where it broke through and uh, made that little circular impression in the 2x4 well that's just an old 2x4 I don't care if I mess it up or not so I want to go into it with each of my uh, holes I drill and um, why I'm not afraid of uh, that splintering out on this is because this is just a guide to keep that other drill bit lined up it's okay if it splinters up on the bottom of this but when I do my real control panel I'm going to go down a little over half the way and I'm going to do that on each hole and then I'll flip the board over and I'll finish each hole from the back and uh, it should still keep it very much lined up the button should still be in the same place so we're just going to drill one more hole and what we're doing is we're drilling one a little closer to that side and then we're going to drill another one maybe right here or right here a little closer to this side because when we go to clamp it we're going to have to move this board up and down a little bit for each button and we just want to make sure that if we're dead center we're not moving the board up so much that the clamp can't reach and clamp this down onto the control panel because these clamps let me show you these clamps can only go so far so if I have to move this up too far the clamp if this has to move up like like that it'll just barely be grabbing it or if it has to move too far it won't be able to clamp it because it can only clear so far on the control panel now if I used a really long piece of wood that might help cover it but this is almost the same same as the uh, width from the front to back to the control panel so it's pretty close so just making a second hole will just kind of alleviate that and it'll give us two holes to pick from when we want to guide our uh, drill bit for positioning to drill out the control panel holes so we'll just do one more And when we did that hole, we actually went through the opposite side. This is the side that was the bottom last time, and it had a little tearing out. And we made that the top on, on this hole, and I didn't do that really on purpose. That's just the way it ended up. But uh, on the opposite side, you can see, for some reason, we didn't have any tearing out. And I don't know why it did that. It just made a real clean hole on the other side. Maybe because I flipped the wood over, uh, this side here is not as prone to chipping and splitting as this side for some reason. This side has a little stronger grain to it. It's like it's been sanded, but I can feel the grain a whole lot more. But it really chipped pretty bad on this hole. This one looks really clean. But anyway, uh, they're just guide holes. They just have to keep the bit in place, so no big deal. We're going to clean this mess up with the air hose and blow it out of the way. going to clamp the uh, control panel down. And we're going to get this board in place for the first hole. And I'll be back in a second.